Hey guys, welcome to another Hacker Rank video where I'm going to be testing my programming skills and practicing my coding. Today I'm going to be focusing on data structures. So I'm going to try and solve some of these problems on the Hacker Rank website. I picked out some interesting ones for today. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first problem for today is called reverse a linked list. It's going to be an easy problem. Uh, just to get things started for today. The title itself uh, says a lot about this problem and I think it's going to be pretty straightforward but let's go ahead and read the problem anyway. Given a pointer to the head node of a linked list, change the next pointers of the nodes so that their order is reversed. The head pointer given may be null meaning that the initial list is empty. For example, here we have a linked list and we can see that the last element points to null. Manipulate the next pointers of each node in place and return head. Now referencing the head of the list. So this would be the linked list at the beginning. And then when we reverse it, it would look like this. And we can see that the first element in this list points to null in this list. Uh, the only parameter is the head. And you should return a pointer to the head of the reverse list. And if we scroll down to see the code, we can see here how the linked list is implemented. Here we can see the node, it has some data, and it has a pointer to the next node in the list. So this is a singly linked list. I think that it would be somewhat easier to reverse a doubly linked list, a list that's linked on, on both sides. So for example, if a singly linked list looks something like this, a doubly linked list would look something like this. Meaning that in this node, you would have a pointer to your next node and your previous one. But let's get back to our problem. All right, so if we look at this example, if we take one of the nodes, for example, two, we can see that in the initial state, 2 points to 3, and that's the only pointer it has. But here, 2 points to 1, which is the previous node. And I need to keep in mind that I only have the next pointer. So in that case, I would have to take next of 1, which would be 2, and then set the next node of 2 to be 1. So basically reverse this connection right here. But then again, I can't really do that if I start from here, because if I reverse this connection and then I go to the next node, at that point, the next node of two would be one. So I would be stuck in an infinite loop. So I probably need to uh, skip ahead and get to the end of the linked list and then start reversing. Anyway, I'm not sure if my explanation was that easy to understand, so I'm gonna go ahead and start writing some code. So, because this is gonna be a recursive function, the first thing I need to do is handle the case where I got to the end of the list and I need to stop the recursion. So I'm gonna say something like this. So if I take the current node, which is the head, and then I take the next element. If that element doesn't exist, or in other words, if it's equal to null, then I'm gonna return the head. This is because the function needs to return the new head of the reversed list. So in this example, I would go to five, and then I would return five because next of five is equal to null. However, if this is not the case, I need to actually reverse the connection between this and the next node. So I'm going to say head next next equals to head, which is the current node. But then I also need to say head next equals to null. So this would handle the reversing. If we take a look at this example, uh, let's look at the node three. Next next of three would be five. So we would set that node to head, which is the node three. So basically we're taking this node and putting it over here. 
but then also we need to set the next of the current node to null. So we take the node 3 which would be over here and we set the next node to null. So that would handle the case where the new head of the list needs to point to null. All we need to do now is call the function recursively. So I'm gonna say reverse head next. But as I said earlier, uh, I can't really start reversing from this side, starting from one. I kinda need to skip ahead and get to five and then start reversing. So the recursive call of this function needs to happen before the actual reversing happens. So let's go ahead and see what will happen if we call this function on this example. So we would call the function reverse, the head would be 1, then it would ask if next is equal to null, it is not, is equal to 2, so it would skip over this condition, and then it would call reverse for the next node, which is 2. So then it would do the same thing for 2, and then for 3, and then for 4, and then for 5. When it gets to 5, it will get to this condition again. The condition will be met because the next of 5 is actually null, so it would return 5. The return would happen here, which means we need to store this result in a variable. I stored the result of this function in h, which would be the new head, and then here I'm gonna say return h. Anyway, back to our example, it will return 5, and then it will go back to 4, and here we're gonna say head next next equals to head, which will take this 4 and move it over here, and then we will set the next of 4 to null, and return the new head, which is 5. Then we'll go back to 3, 2, and 1, and do the same thing. This looks fine to me, let's go ahead and uh, try to run it. Okay, works for sample test cases, let's go ahead and submit. And that's it, looks like it works for all the test cases, let's move on to the next one. Now before we move on to the next problem for today, I kind of wanted to segue into something that I thought about while solving the previous problem, and that is to reverse a binary tree. Now I think that this is a very popular problem in programming, especially when it comes to coding interviews and things like that, and I just wanted to take the opportunity and maybe try to solve it. However, I couldn't find that problem on the HackerRank website, so I decided to make the challenge myself. So here I am in Visual Studio, I implemented everything that I need about a binary tree, and now I'm going to implement the reverse function. Now before I do that, let me show you what I have so far. I implemented the node class, it has the value, and then the left and the right pointers, pretty simple. Then I have the tree class, which has a pointer to the head of the tree, and some basic functions like insert node, print, and here's the reverse function, which is not yet implemented. That's what I'm going to be doing today. And here is the main function, which is just a bunch of print statements, console logging, and things like that. Anyway, let me run the program and show you what I've got so far. So here's the program, it's a simple console app, and as you can see it says binary tree visualization, and then you have these five commands that you can type in. The first one is called commands, and you can type it to get this list of commands in case you forgot some of them. The second one is print, and it's supposed to display the current state of the tree. The third one is called insert and then the node value to insert a new node in the tree. Fourth one is reverse, which is not yet implemented, and then the last one is quit to exit the program. So let me go ahead and type some of these commands. Now let me show you how I decided to go about printing the tree. So here I have two tree examples. I would say this is the most common way of printing a tree. This would be the head of the tree, then this would be the left and the right node. Here is another example, again this is the head and then the left and the right node. And these are the children of the left node and so on. Now printing the tree in the console like this wouldn't be too easy. I would have to do some kind of string formatting, 
white space formatting and things like that and I didn't want to spend too much time on this and that is why I decided to print the tree like this. Now at first this might be a bit confusing but it is the same representation as on the left but it is flipped 90 degrees. So this would be the head, this would be the right node, this would be the left node and so on. This is a bit easier to print in the console but I feel like it is still very readable and understandable. Let me go ahead and insert these nodes to show you that the printing works. As you can see it looks the same as the example I showed. Now once I have all of this prepared I'm gonna head over to the tree class and I'm gonna implement the reverse method. First of all I'm gonna have a separate function because I want to keep this function like this with no arguments but I know that my recursive function is gonna have one argument and that's gonna be the head of the tree. And I think that's it. First of all I'm gonna check if the current node is equal to null. Then if it isn't I'm gonna go ahead and swap its left and right nodes. And finally I'm gonna recursively call this function for both the left and the right node. In the main reverse function I'm just gonna say reverse rec and then pass the heads of the tree. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna replicate this example in my program and let's see if it works. Okay here is the tree before I call the reverse function and here is the tree after. Again it might be a bit difficult to notice that it's the same as this one because it's displayed a bit differently but it's the correct result. As you can see 10 is on the left side now, 3 is on the right side, these two are swapped as well and everything works perfectly. This was actually a pretty cool side project and side quest to do. If you have any questions about it let me know in the comments and also if you're interested you can check out all of this code in the description below. Alright so the last problem for today for data structures is going to be this one. It's called Simple Text Editor. It's a medium problem and I'm hoping it's going to be a good one. Let's go ahead and read it. In this challenge you must implement a simple text editor. Initially your editor contains an empty string s. You must perform q operations of the following four types. Append, append string w to the end of s, delete k, delete the last k characters of s, print, print the k character of s, and for undo, undo the last not previously undone operation of the type 1 or 2, reverting s to the state it was in prior to that operation. Alright, so at first this problem doesn't really seem to belong in this category of data structures, but once I read this last operation it, it all made sense. I already have an idea of how I'm gonna solve this. Obviously I'm gonna be using the stack structure to implement this last operation. Alright so I wanted to show you how I wanted to use the stack structure in this situation. So I opened up paint and I wanted to kind of visualize this whole problem. So let's say I have a stack here on the left and I have a bunch of operations that I need to execute on the right. Whenever I want to execute an operation I'm gonna go ahead and push it onto my stack. So in that case I'm gonna be calling the push function. Now let's go ahead and execute some more operations. Alright now let's say I wanted to do the undo operation which is the fourth operation in the problem. Well all I need to do just like in paint I need to click this undo button. In other words I'm gonna be using the pop method. So the stack data structure comes in really handy in this situation. Anyway back to our problem. Here we can see a sample input and the first number 8 represents the number of operations that are going to be executed. So there's eight operations. The first one is coded 1 which is going to be append and then I'm going to append abc to my current string. 
So to start off the program, I'm going to have an empty string and then I'm going to append ABC to it. The next operation is 3, which is print. So I'm going to print the third character, which would be C. Here it is. Then the second operation would be delete the last K characters of S. So I would delete the last three characters, which means it would be back to an empty string. Then I would append XY and so on. Let's go ahead and start coding. First I'm going to write out some basic code and handle the inputs. As I said in the beginning I have an empty string called S and then N is going to be this guy right here, the number of operations that I need to execute. And then I have a for loop for each of those operations. I read the line and then I'm going to do something differently depending on which operation I need to execute. For the first operation I need to append string w to the end of s. Luckily there's a built-in function for that. For the second one I need to delete the last k characters of s. For the third one I need to print the k character of s. And for the last one I need to undo the previous operation. Now this is where the stack comes in. First of all I'm going to need to include the stack library and then here I'm going to say stack of strings and I'm going to call it stack. And at the beginning I'm going to say stack push s. And whenever I do one of these operations, either append or delete, I'm going to push a new value to the stack. But now in the last operation I'm going to say stack pop and then I'm going to say s equals to stack top. So I'm going to remove the last element and then I'm going to take the previous one. In other words, I'm going to take the previous state of the string s. I think this looks okay for now. Let's go ahead and run it. Looks like we got the wrong answer and I think it's because I am not printing the correct character. And there we go. The problem was that I was using zero based indexes when the argument was passed as a one based index. Let's go ahead and submit. Looks like it works for all the test cases and that's it for this challenge. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the data structures I use in this video, be sure to post your question below in the comments. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.